So I'll, I'll ask us all the same question I asked the young one just a little bit ago. Ever feel like you're not being heard? Ever feel like people don't want to listen? Ever feel like maybe folks have just decided to totally tune you out altogether? Yeah. So we have this passage from Luke's Gospel this morning, and it's a passage that I think many of us are familiar with. We hear it almost every year. We're familiar with Mary going to see Elizabeth. We're familiar with how she's filled with the Spirit and great joy at being in Mary's presence. And while this is a familiar story and, and one that brings joy to our hearts, it's cast in the backdrop of something else that's also very true that um, perhaps we've just chosen to ignore. You see, Mary gets this word from the angel, is told that she's going to be the mother of Jesus, <laughs> and no one seems to want to listen to her or believe her or trust her words. In fact, many of us know the story of Joseph quite well. What is it that Joseph does when he hears about Mary being with child? I don't want to be involved in this. I'm going to go and quietly kind of get rid of her. In fact, the only person who ever seems to listen to Mary, especially in Luke's Gospel, is Elizabeth. Now, sure, we can contextualize this. We can think about the culture and the time and, and think about how embarrassing it might be for someone who is maybe 13, 14, 15, 16 years old to be pregnant and unmarried in that time in that society. We might think about all the other cultural norms and judgments that we could throw on that, but is that really helping us or is it just trying to make us feel as though we can rationalize it? Feel as though we can make an excuse for why it is that people would ignore someone else. Elizabeth chooses to listen. Elizabeth chooses to listen and chooses to be present with Mary in this time of great uncertainty and wonder as to what is going on. And she responds with great joy. Elizabeth says, For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Elizabeth chose to allow faith in this great wondrous sensation that she's received from John the yet unborn Baptist and decides that her faith is more important than the judgment calls. That the love of another person is more important than anything else. And Elizabeth chooses to listen to Mary, to give thanks for Mary's presence in her home. And Mary, who's been bottling up all of this stuff since she first finds out that she is going to be the mother of the coming Messiah, sings a beautiful song. She sings about how her soul magnifies the Lord and that her spirit rejoices with God her Savior for having looked upon her in her lowliness. She gives thanks to God for being able to be part of this wondrous, miraculous thing that's going to happen even if the entire world has decided to write her off and ignore her and cast judgments and dispersions upon her. You know, I, I want to believe that as human beings, we've grown to a point in our 
world where we are able to listen to one another, where we're able to be present with one another, where we're able to take one another's stories as they are and give thanks for the sharing, and yet somehow I think we've not come very far since 2,000 years ago. Somehow I get the feeling that when we hear stories, particularly stories that our society or our culture or our own upbringing has told us to be skeptical of, we put up those barriers, we build those walls to make us shut out something that's different. Something that might make us feel uncomfortable. Something that might make us question what is right. And yet, here in this gospel, here in this telling from Luke of this encounter between Mary and Elizabeth, we get this flipping of things. We get this change of the narrative. We get a reminder that from the ancientness of times, from the earliest of the Christian communities, we're supposed to give thanks to God for the wondrous things that God is doing. And listen and believe the story. I think it's no small coincidence that one of the oldest of hymns, Mary's song, is a hymn about listening to a woman that society would have written off. One of the oldest hymns of our faith is listening to the voice of those who would have been voiceless. And just as it was the case 2,000 years ago, so it is for us now. For us people who have gathered on this day to hear the story of God's good news. Where are the voices in our world today? Where are the ones that are trying to tell us the good news and we aren't listening or we have turned away. Where is our opportunity to stop and shout with a loud voice, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. We are less than really a day away from the time when our faith, our world celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. Are we listening for the coming of our Lord? Are we opening our hearts to see Christ with us and the messengers of that good news? so that we too might rejoice and gladly share it with a world longing to know it and hear it. May Christ stir our hearts to be good listeners this day. May Christ stir our hearts to be proclaimers of good news and love for all of God's people, even God's lowly servants in our midst. Amen.